Good morning, everyone. This is Using Machine Learning for IoT. My name is Nandana Pai, and I am a rising sophomore majoring in electrical and computer engineering at Rutgers. I'm Diana Sri Raman, and I'm currently a rising senior high school student at the Middles Middlesex County Academy for STEM. So to start with the motivation behind this project, the goal is to enable smart applications in healthcare and energy. So we aim to reduce energy consumption in buildings. Our system would be used to determine occupancy and this would be considered along with comfort preferences to automate the HVAC system. So while maintaining the settings to ensure that individuals are comfortable, we'll be prioritizing um, saving energy as well. And if there are no occupants, the system would be turned off. For healthcare, on the other hand, we would like to monitor the health of elderly within their homes. So by determining which room an individual is in and classifying their actions, a family member or a care provider would be able to know that they are safe and mobile without having to watch them through a camera. Our objective is that we are using ambient sensing to infer human activity. Specifically, we're working on a web page which serves as a visual representation of the data which will be eventually collected from an experimental framework. By looking at the signatures when there is a change in the environment, we hope to observe trends which can then be generalized to a specific occur occurrence or an event. On the right-hand side is a block diagram of, for the system displaying both the hardware and the software components that we will be discussing today and how the data is transferred. And to provide some background information, ambient sensing is the process of detecting and reacting to human presence using ambient sensors, which measure characteristics in the immediate surroundings and environment. A Raspberry Pi is a small integrated circuit which supports the features and functionalities of a computer. It can be connected to a monitor and used with a keyboard. An Arduino is a microcontroller board with input and output pins, and it can be interfaced with external circuitry. And a database is an organized collection of structured information and one can easily access stored data and update it. The Maestro box is the hardware component of the system. It consists of two modules, the sensing node, which contains external sensors measuring PIR, which stands for passive infrared um, for motion detection, color and illumination, and general um, properties that can be measured in the environment, such as audio, pressure, humidity, temperature, as well as IMU, which stands for Inertial Measurement Unit. And we're interested in the accelerometer and magnetometer. And these are all attached to the Arduino Uno. And this unit is connected via a USB cable to the Raspberry Pi. So there are nine sensors and a total of 18 data points per unit time. And data is collected at a rate of 30 samples per second. And now for the SmartBox database, this is the Postgres database, which is updated with data from the sensors every 10 seconds when the box is powered. And we relied on this to store and retrieve data using SQL to query. Um, PG2 is a Python library, and we use this to um, implement uh, periodically uh, collecting data from the database without having to manually write a query each time. So it would be automatic. The data table within the database uses Timescale DB, which is a time series optimized database which runs over Postgres, and this is needed to support timestamps. And for going forward, the need is to store and collect large amounts of data in the database. So we moved the database over to a disk with more space to accommodate for this and also changed the format. So here we can see an image of the old structure of the database and the new structure at the bottom. And you can see that for every timestamp, 18 rows used to be written for the database um, and each of represent a different sensor. And here we have um, two sets of data walking and running, which is why there are 36 rows. And the change that was made is that each of the channel names, instead of being stored as a row, now have an individual column. So these 36 rows are equivalently represented using only two rows now. And a lot of the work for our system was done on the back end to make sure everything operates successfully. So this is what is displayed during the process of reading from the database every 10 seconds and sending the information over to the web page. So you can see that each sensor here um, has a specific ID and we're sending over the timestamp and of course the value from the sensor to be displayed on the web page. And speaking of the web page, 
To start off with some of the technical details about the live demo webpage, it was written using HTML and JavaScript. We are using MQTT, which is an open source messaging tool, which allows for the transfer of data across different platforms. Uh, so this is used to send data from the database to the Python program from the previous slide, finally to the client who subscribed and receives the messages or data values, the web page. There are 18 values sent every time that are stored, every time that uh, are stored in their respective arrays with point, pl points plotted on the corresponding graphs. In terms of design, we are using Chart.js to generate the plots and to customize the design based on the aesthetic preferences. There are 18 line plots, one per data value, and we also have a drop down menu to select the Maestro box name because in the future, multiple boxes will be used in conjunction for data collection. This is a short animation that shows the drop down menu in action. Currently, for testing purposes, we are only using a single Maestro box, but you can select any box name and it would refresh to display those plots. So, this is what nine of the 18 plots look like. Um, and going from uh, left to right, top to bottom. Uh, as mentioned before, the PIR is the motion, and then we have the audio, which will pick up the sound in the environment. For illumination and color, there are a few plots representing that, and they all seem to have the same shape, but different values, because they're essentially all measuring the same thing, just different channels for R, G, B, and C, red, green, blue, and clear light sensing. Next, we have temperature, pressure, approximate altitude, and humidity. The values may fluctuate slightly, but they are more or less the same. And the box was being moved during the sample run, which is why there is fluctuation in the last six graphs. And these are the X, Y, and Z axis values with the accelerometer and magnetometer, which will change with the movement or change in position. We are going to start off by looking at the first plot in brown for PIR or motion detection. You just saw me wave my hand over the sensor, and now we see a change in the value from 0 to 1, indicating that there is motion, where 0 means no motion. It takes a few seconds to update, but I did wave my hand over again, and we see that the plot continues to remain at a 1. Now looking at the red graph for audio, I have moved my phone, which was playing a song very loudly towards the mic, and it looks like the graph has flatlined, and this is because it automatically scales the y-axis to reflect the most recent value, so you might see that going forward. I'm now shining a flashlight, white light, over the sensor, and we saw a change in quite a few of the plots representing color and illumination. Now with a colored lens, the light is orange instead of white, so we expect to see a change in the RGBC values once again. If we look at the last plot in the second row, the one that is light blue, it is for humidity, and I'm actually blowing air through a straw above the sensor to show that it does result in a change, and we see the graph did spike up just now. And now I am raising up the Arduino and changing its position and orientation. We expect to see a change in the last six graphs for the accelerometer and magnetometer, and we see that there is a significant shift in the values. So going forward, we would like to add a live video feed on the web page, which will be synchronized and uh, with the corresponding data. We also need to establish a user-driven experimental framework for realistic data collection. And afterwards, a graduate student would step in and train a machine learning model so that human activity can be inferred without using a camera. And finally, we would be ready to deploy the system. Thank you for listening. Are there any questions?